Hello dear friends, uh, this is Anton Bosch again, it's 7th of December 2021 and um, I want to read my latest blog for you. Uh, it is entitled Ebenezer. First Samuel 7.12 says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mispah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. The word Ebenezer is from Eben, which means stone, and Ezer, which means help. So literally a stone of help. But it is not the stone that helped them. As Samuel said, the Lord has helped us thus far. The stone was simply a memorial to remind them of the Lord's faithfulness. We need to be reminded of the Lord's faithfulness because we are forgetful and so easily become overwhelmed with our present problems. Jacob had a similar experience when he raised the stone he used for a pillow poured oil on it and as a thank offering and called the place Bethel, the house of God, Genesis 28, 16 through 18. The stone was not an object of worship, nor was it a talisman. It was simply a reminder to Jacob and his descendants that there he had met with God. When Israel crossed over the Jordan into the land, Joshua instructed a representative from each of the tribes to collect a stone from the river and erected at their campsite as a perpetual memorial of God's faithfulness in bringing them across the river and into the land. Joshua 4 verses 6 through 7. For Israel, the purpose of the feast was also to remind them of God's mighty works in the past and his faithfulness. And thus, the Lord instituted various memorials, days of, and symbols to act as reminders to a people who so quickly and so often forgot that the Lord had never failed them. In the New Testament we no longer raise stones and other memorials, but we do have the Lord's table which serves to remind us regularly of the cross, our salvation and the Lord Jesus. Here in the United States we celebrate Thanksgiving this week. Sadly most people do not even know who they should be thankful to, and the day has degenerated into a day of gluttony, family fights and selfishness as the poor and the lonely are forgotten, a day of greed as people flock to the stores before the turkey is even settled in their stomachs. But for the believer it is a good opportunity to reflect deeply, not just to say a hasty prayer of thanks before the gorging starts, on the Lord's faithfulness. Indeed, thus far the Lord has brought us, and as the hymn writer says, He will bring us safely home. It does not matter how big the obstacles and problems may be that we face today. And yes, to many of us, they seem to be insurmountable. But we need to be reminded that God has never failed us. He has saved us. He has kept us. He has provided for us in every way. He has proven His reliability and faithfulness in spite of our faithlessness. David said, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread, Psalm 37.25. Paul testified before Agrippa, therefore, having obtained help from the Lord, to this day I stand, Acts 26.22. He also said, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1.6. When King Hezekiah faced an impending invasion by the Assyrians, he said in 2 Chronicles 32, 7-8, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. For there are more with us than with them. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God, to help us and to fight our battles. Social and news media love to remind us that we have more problems than ever. And indeed, COVID, inflation, political upheaval, global warming, and a host of other problems may beset us. But we do not have a single verse in the Bible that tells us to keep record of all our problems. No, we have one task, and that is to remember that the Lord has never failed us, and that He will see us through. We have come thus far, not because of our own skill or ability, but because the Lord has brought us thus far. May we again remind ourselves of the many waters, fires and wars through which he has brought us. And he has promised, 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame scorch you. Isaiah 43 verse 2 As we sit down to eat, may we remind ourselves and our children of God's goodness and faithfulness, and that His faithfulness in the past is our assurance of His willingness and ability to see us through whatever the future holds. And now let me quote that great hymn for you. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. O oh, to grace our greater debtor, daily I am constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my yielded heart to thee. Let me know thee in thy fullness, guide me by thy mighty hand, till transformed in thine own image, in thy presence I shall stand. Amen. God bless you.